Dun, 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 the 941. It's every quarter you have to file this thing. It's so annoying. Yes, it's it's the 941, everybody. I meant to do a video about the 941. I did one about payroll in 2013. Like I called one federal income tax, you know, withholding formula or something. I tagged it really well and talked about how to do federal income tax withholding. The 941 is just this annoying form that you have to fill out every quarter if you run a business. And I've simplified the thing, and I'm not even going to show you the Excel file in this video. I'm just going to show you the picture as simple as you can make it for like 99% of businesses is right here. It's the 941, and it fills it in automatically, does this stupid fraction of a cent adjustment down here, does everything for you. I'm going to explain how you got here because when you try to fill the 941 out yourself, when you're like, hey, I can do this. You open this thing up and you're like, wait a minute, what is all this nonsense? I got to do this. Why am I off by pennies? I hate my life. Why am I doing math in these stupid lines in these boxes that are too far over on the wrong side so I can't see where I'm putting things? And why do I have to copy the same over three times? What's wrong with you, government? Yeah, I know. We all, we all complain about it. It's fine. But I made it easy because I went through all this process. And so I'm going to talk about the 941 today and how you can understand because somebody's asking me, Ken, I did my 941, it's not matching up. I'm like, you know what? I've made all the same mistakes you made years ago, and I'll show you what happened. So let's talk about the 941. In my Excel file, for, for people who don't hate their life and want to make life easy, you just change this little thing up here to whatever quarter or whatever month, and this is all going to fill in automatically. What are these rows? You know, what are these things I have here? How do they match up to the actual PDF that you've got to fill out? Look at how smart the government's getting, by the way. You can't even go back and clip, click on April, May, June anymore because this thing is revised as of July of this year, and they're like, stop filing old quarters already. Like, you should have downloaded it done it on time. <laughs> we know you got to you know, do this thing right. So uh, they allow you to only go over here like and say, we're doing Q3 right now. So July, September, August, uh, or sorry, July, August, September uh, are done, and now people are filing, right? You put your employee ID here, whatever it is, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, this is Ken, Ken Biz, whatever. And if you use a different name, you put your address, everything here, fine. When you're doing the number of employees that have been working for your company for, they want actual months, like at, like toward the end of the month here in this last quarter, how many people was it? Well, on this thing here, this is going to fill it in automatically if you have one of my newer versions, which hopefully you do. And so uh, there was three people, right? So easy. No problem. Three people. Done. That's an easy one. Now we start to get the questions that are complicated. Wages, tips, and other compensation. Now here is the open debate. Um, I don't think it's much of a debate because of what the next question is, which is how much federal income tax from your wages, tips, and other compensation was held. Your wages, tips, and other compensation are your taxable wages, tips, and other compensation. For some reason, the word taxable is missing there, um, and it should be because then you get a different question down here called if no wages and tips were, were subject to Social Security, as if like this number means that you start with this number and then you you're going to be subtracting something out to get taxable Social Security wages down here? Not true. That's not true. That's what's confusing about this. Taxable Social Security wages are sometimes more, are oftentimes more than this number. Um, th things are going to vary. So this is taxable wages, tips, and other compensation is, I believe, what goes here. And that's why, um, you know, if you have, you pay somebody money and like in this, sample uh, situation where we're just looking at numbers and they're not really tied to anything. I'm not going to go into where they come from, but the, the numbers here, there's 6,700 in wages right here, but there's 6,951 in taxable. There was more taxable Social Security. Why? That's probably because there's a deduction for some type of deferral for a 401k retirement or something, something that's not part of federal taxable wages that reduces this number right here. And the federal tax you're calculating and that's coming out of the formulas automatically and what's coming off your paychecks if you look at how much federal tax, you know, like the 750 that supposedly Trump paid in 2016 is this number for him. If he was the only employee, he would have contributed 319 bucks on his first 6,700 of wages in the year 
uh, if, if they had the same filing statuses and stuff, which I'm not going to get into that level of detail. But point is, that's the federal amount right there. Then your Social Security wages may be more because sometimes that retirement or something is subject to Social Security. If it is so subject to Social Security, then it goes right here. And um, a lot of times that stuff is Social Security wages, uh, depending on if it's like an employer sponsored health care. It's not subject to Social Security because it's not like a cash distribution. There's a whole list in the publication 15 that I'm not going to go over, but this is supposed to automatically sum up that correct number for you. Multiply it by this 12.4. This is because Social Security or that check that grandpa gets um, every month for $2,000 or something is going to um, be, it, it, we, we supposedly pay 6.2% of our wages toward it, and then our employer pays another 6.2%, which is where you get this 12.4% that they're trying to tell you well, how much went to Social Security from all this money, and that's what this 862 is. There could be tips that are doing the same thing in this, in this example in my file. There are no tips applied here, but there could be, uh, which... The only reason they do that is because they're they're tougher they're tougher for the employer to to sometimes take from the employee, and that's why there ends up being problems with tips, which is why there's a separate line item on the 941 for tips so they they can track that money. Taxable Medicare wages uh, can be higher than Social Security because Social Security has a maximum wage amount every year. It's like 138 thousand something or something right now, something around that number, and it's going to um, potentially Medicare gets taxed all the way up infinitely and at over $200,000, I believe there's a extra 0.5% or 0.1% or something extra Medicare tax. Um, that's I'm sorry, 0.09. That's right there. There's uh, additional subject Medicare holding is here. So that's at a 0.9% uh, rate above, I believe, 200,000 or something. Um, uh, I have it in the formulas. I just can't remember off the top of my head. So this is, this is subtotaling all this breaking it down by where the money was supposed to be going so that the IRS knows, you know, wh what you paid them and, and where you got numbers right and where you got numbers wrong because their form is so freaking complicated, right? Like, why is there two different ways? They, whatever, they got to grab the numbers. I get it, but it's annoying. So then they're like subtotal column two. So they're like, add this stuff up and put it here, but don't add this one up because we designed our form like morons. Sorry, guys at IRS. I know some of you guys, you guys are nice. I mean, you try, but the point is, is, this is not this plus this plus this is not this. It's this plus this is this. Then you got to add this again for no reason. Then you got to adjust for fractions of the cents because everybody's wrong because there were so many different paychecks that were rounded up to a penny, you know, throughout the way that you can never get this right because the 6.2% or the 0.29% or the 0.09% is not an even penny number. It's a fraction of a cent which is why you end up getting fraction of cent adjustments that you can't avoid no matter what you do. I know, annoying. I could solve the problem. Get rid of the freaking penny. Let's get rid of the penny already. Anyway, total taxes are going to be this, this, plus this. 319th, boom, there. And you should pay it at the end of the quarter or month or whatever your pay, semi-weekly or whatever your pay schedule is that requires you to deposit in this instance, I would be, I believe it's like every quarter, or every month, you should be trying to get this in at this rate if this is a full quarterly report. So, um, I mean, that's kind of the 941, basically. There's, there's a Schedule B that I could go over where you have to put in payments that you've done every week. I have that as well, but there's no need to get into that in this example. Um, it doesn't have to be that complicated if you're, if you're a small business. And um, yeah, payroll should be easy, so make it so.